Welcome back. I'm MTG Joe here with another Theros Beyond Death uh, initial brew kind of deck tech. Um, a bunch of cards have been spoiled over the last few days. A lot of cool mechanics. Um, and the one that I'm probably most excited for out of any deck is Mono Black Devotion. I'm playing this deck in Pioneer. Um, so part of it is a port over. Um, so with Devotion, basically what it is is counting the number of pips or mana symbols and uh, those add to what's considered your devotion and there's cards that allow you to have payoffs so this is a predominantly base black deck um, every card in it is black or an artifact and what you're able to do is take advantage of really uh, this little guy here gray merchant of asphodel so this is a five mana two four uh, stats on its own not too impressive um, but when it enters the battlefield each opponent loses x life uh, where X is your devotion and you gain e life equal to the life lost that turn. So basically it's a giant fireball effect. You want to stack a bunch of different, uh, get a bunch of different creatures out or enchantments, artifacts that have a bunch of black devotion in it. Play uh, Grey Merchant or he's typically referred to as Gary um, and drain your opponent out of a bunch of life. So it's a really swingy deck, lots of life gain, life loss. Um, so the deck itself, walk you through it. Um, there's actually a lot of cards. so. Um, there's probably going to be a lot of questions of why did you choose this over this or this over that. Uh, my initial pool was like 100 cards in this deck and I've just been cutting it down. Um, so we want to kind of get to the late game. Uh, playing. We're going to always pretty much win the late game in this deck. So ways we do it is keep our life high. So we have the Cat Oven deck combo. Um, so Cat Oven, uh, Cauldron Familiar, gain a life when it enters the battlefield. When it dies, you can return to the battlefield if you sack a food. Oven, sacks it, gets a a food token, you loop it, you drain them from a bunch of life. Um, so paired with that is a Yara, um, which kind of doubles that life gain. Any black creature entered in the battlefield, we gain a life and an opponent loses a life. So that's kind of the core of how we're gaining the life. A Yara also has the upside of sacrificing another black creature to get, let us draw a card. So there's a lot of inherent card draw action in the deck, which works out really well for a mid-range deck. Um, then we have two Falmire Knights. Um, so I was deciding between cat combo and kind of had that in, so that took up eight spots. So I opted to go with, instead of a Yarrick's Fenlurker, which is a two mana, one one that exiles a card from your opponent's hand. Um, it's kind of low s impact. Uh, Falmire Knight is a one mana, one one with death touch that can trade up. It can trade with like uh, Lovestruck Beast or any of the big guys. Uh, and it's also with the adventure you can draw a card lose a life so late game you can just kind of it's two spells in one so i opted to go two of those and then two order of midnights we want to get back our gray merchants if they die any of our key cards so it's kind of a, a loop there also against like other ground bound decks it can fly over top uh four of night of even legion the best one block one drop in the format um probably close to pioneer as well other than the elves uh, the ovens, a Yara, then I have uh, three Midnight Reapers. Uh, creatures are dying, so might as well draw some cards off them. That insulates us as well against board wipes. They can wipe our board, we just refill our hand. Um, got four Murderous Riders. This deals with uh, pretty much every threat, creature, or Planeswalker, and it's a 2-3 Life Linker on the backside. So a lot of our cards, we get multiple use out of them. Um, another card I'm excited to try out is Erebos. Uh, Erebos is the new god that's spoiled, so it's an enchantment that's indestructible as long as your devotion is less than five. Um, so it self counts as one, so you need four more. Um, so a couple creatures here and there can turn it on. Um, whenever another creature you control dies, you can pay two life if you do draw a card. So just another way for us to refill our hand if stuff dies. Uh, and then for two mana, you can sacrifice another creature. Target creature gets minus two one till end of turn. So it's removal that we can then pay two mana, two life, kill something, draw a card, and you kind of loop it from there. Uh, Rankle is another card that I like. It's hasties, can deal with uh, opponent's planeswalkers, stuff like that. Flies over top, can force discard, give us card draw, or force sacrifice. Um, if we have stuff like a cat, we can sacrifice it, kind of go from there. Obviously the Grey Merchants, and the last cards are Bolus's Citadel. So Bolus's Citadel, we're getting a lot of life in the deck. Uh, we can play the top cards of our library anytime you normally would. Um, so basically, Grey Merchants are free in a sense. Uh, you pay five life, but you gain five life back from just these two cards, not to mention anything else you would cast. 
There's also the other text that usually never comes to play, but you can sacrifice 10 online permanents and each opponent loses 10 life. Being base black, you can play for Castle Lockwain, just more card advantage. And I got a couple of Witch's Cottages uh, just to put creatures back on top of our library. Uh, yeah, so it's another way to recycle the Grey Merchant. So just lots of ways to get a uh, Grey Merchant back. Uh, sideboard wise, obviously this is something that will change as we figure out the meta. I originally had Cling to Dust, which is a new card in the format. It is uh, targeted exile um, that you get to either gain life if it's a creature or draw a card and then recycle it multiple times with escape. Uh, I think Leyline of the Void, just with more and more being spoiled, of uh, it being graveyard focused, Leyline is probably the where to go. So that's probably a switch I'm gonna make. Uh, got a couple duress, some noxious grass, assuming that we still see green and white being the more prominent. Uh, Spyglass is general answer to Planeswalkers or some of the artifacts. Uh, a couple other spells, again, if Planeswalkers. So some of this is going to change, obviously. We don't know what the meta is like. Uh, Deathless Knight's actually a pretty cool card and may have a place in the main board, but I want to try Rankle first because it's inherently more powerful. Uh, Council's for Devotion. This will come in in the more grindy matchups. It's a 4 mana, 4 2 with haste. And then whenever you gain life for the first time, if it's in your graveyard, it gets returned to your hand. As demoed in the deck, we have a ton of different ways to gain life. Uh, so it's just a way that we can keep getting it back to our hand and have our opponent deal with a 4-2 haste every turn. And then finally, the last card that was spoiled. Um, this one, I don't know. It, on best case, it's like a Doomblade Plus. So it's a 4 mana instant speed removal spell that destroys target creature. Costs 2 less for your devotion to block. Um, so it can be like a murder, it can just be an overpriced removal spell, or it can be a two mana kill any creature. I still think Murderous Rider is better in the main, it being a creature, as well as targeting Planeswalkers, but it's just some more added removal. Uh, things like Legion's End may have a place in the deck, uh, probably not Cryo Carnarium, it, it kind of goes against what we're trying to do, but there's a lot of kind of targeted removal. There's that enchantment for... Uh, two mana that gives target creature minus three three so that's another good removal spell so lots to kind of play with the deck um so that's pretty much it uh the one card again people might ask uh priest of the forgotten gods uh we're not really an aristocrat style deck we're not really trying to sacrifice as much for value like if you have like rakdos where you have like the chandra token stuff like that um so instead i wanted to keep it kind of tight like i don't want to sacrifice a knight of even legion to a priest uh, like Order of Midnight's fine, um, but usually a lot of these cards are inherently more powerful than the Priest itself would be. Um, so that's pretty much it. Let me know what you think. I have a couple other decks that I'll be featuring. I have a Gruul Control deck around the Gruul God. I have a Perforo Sneak Attack uh, Big Fatty deck. Um, and I'm working on a couple other ones. Uh, but if there's anything you'd be interested in seeing, do let me know in the YouTube comments below. If you like this video and enjoy the content, like to see more, uh, easiest way to show your support, uh, drop a like, drop a comment, or if you haven't done so already, uh, do make sure to subscribe. As soon as Theros comes out, we'll be streaming all these decks live on the channel, um, so good to know when we're coming with that. Thanks for watching, and have a great one.